Hey guys, Stephanie here and welcome to the Aeroponic Tower channel. Today I'm going to discuss all things growing lettuce in your aeroponic tower garden from seed starting all the way to when it's time to harvest, some things to look out for. Should you plant one seed or 20 seeds? Answering those questions and just showing you what has worked for me and some of the things that I've learned that don't work when you're growing indoors um, in an aeroponic tower. And so this is specific to growing lettuce indoors during the winter in an aeroponic tower or really any time of the year, um, but growing indoors. I will be making a series of videos growing in the spring when the tower's outside, um, ways to grow in the summer for lettuce and ways to grow in the fall. It changes your plants grown indoors and the winter are going to be different than your plants grown outside in the fall. So I will share the varieties that I think do best indoors and just all the tips and tricks that I have learned by doing this every single day, 365 days a year, making sure I have beautiful hood to harvest um, every day of the week. So let's dive in and get started. So to get started, I pulled some things out of my towers and I'm just going to share my real life experience with you. What I do so that I have this beautiful lettuce to harvest, what is it, how many seeds, all those sorts of things. So I wanna start with this particular lettuce right here. This is a lettuce known as Salanova and this is a Salanova butter lettuce. So just like a regular butter lettuce, um, except for Salanova has three times the amount of leaves than a traditional lettuce plant. And it's not gonna get bigger leaves than this. This is full grown Salanova lettuce leaves. These sort of hit the market recently for market gardeners because you can take this, cut off the root base, and it falls apart into this giant bed of what look like baby greens. The difference is a baby green this is an example right here. This is a very young plant. A baby green is very soft and it's very delicate and its flavor is gonna be different because it's not a mature plant where this is actually a mature plant. This one's ready to be harvested. I'll show you some signs and how I know that. And even though it's full size and it's full maturity, it still has the size of the baby greens. So you're gonna get the firmer texture you can hear how crispy it is, and you're gonna get the full flavor of a mature lettuce. So these make an excellent green to grow on your aeroponic tower. They are known to do really well in hydroponic situations as well. These seeds come from Johnny Seeds, and I will talk about seeds in a little bit. But this is a butter lettuce, and it's full grown, and I know it's full grown for a couple of reasons. One, I know when I planted it, but it's also starting to get some brown tips. And you can get brown tips on lettuce and it's something called um, tip burn. That's a whole nother complicated thing. That's not what this is. This is just a plant that has reached its maturity and now it's gonna start to go on the decline. And all plants have that. They're going to reach their peak and then they're gonna start to want to produce flowers and seeds to save itself. So all the energy is going to get pushed out of the leaves and into the center of this plant where it's gonna produce a flower. So that's what's happening. This one needs to be harvested. So if you start to see lettuce that's getting just a little bit of browning and it's a more mature plant, it's been, this one's been in the tower for about four weeks, maybe close to five, and it's time. I should have harvested it a couple of days ago, but I wanted to make this video for you guys. This is one I wanted to show you too, because in here you can see I have two heads of lettuce. And so one thing I have found is with Salanova lettuce, and this is not the case with everything, you can do two lettuce seeds and still not hinder the growth of the plant. Sometimes if you do more than one seed, you'll hinder the growth of all of them and it's not worth it. With Salanova lettuces, I have found that they do great with two seeds. Three seeds, we start to have a problem and I'll show you what that looks like. And it starts to just not really be effective. So you're wasting cost on that third seed. But with two seeds, as long as each side is getting the, round, the right amount of light, I have two full heads of lettuce here. This is a smaller head of lettuce compared to what you would get if you planted this seed in your tower outside in the spring. 
or in the ground too. Um, and the reason is because we're growing in the garage under artificial lighting and it's actually pretty cool in here. It stays about 62 degrees. And all of those things are just going to mean smaller plants. So keep that in mind too. If you're growing inside, some of your plants may be a little bit smaller if your temperatures are cooler in the house or wherever you're growing. Now most people keep their house a little bit warmer than 62, so you may have a little bit faster growth or a little bit larger growth than I'm getting. But that is something to be mindful of. This is full grown, even though it's not to its full size potential. And that's okay because I just keep food turning around really fast and I'll share my tips on how to make sure you have access to harvesting food every single day. It's just knowing, you know, what you're dealing with so that you're not waiting for this to become something that it's never going to become because of the growing conditions. So here I did two seeds. You can see I have two gorgeous heads ready to be harvested. But what happens if we add three seeds. So here is one. This is an oak leaf and three or more seeds, I should say. This is an oak leaf salanova. So same type of variety. It's grown, it's, it's, uh, it's grown specifically for getting those baby greens. It's amazing when you mix all of these together, it makes the most amazing salad. The flavor, the color, the texture, it's perfect. But in this one, I put four seeds and I wanted to do a little experiment to show you guys so we could answer the question, how many seeds? And the answer depends, you know, can you do one seed or 20? And the answer is yes. It just depends on what your goals are. If your goal is to get a big head of Salanova lettuce, I have found two is the right formula. If your goal is to get a bunch of baby greens, then you would want to be doing 20 seeds where you could cut and come again. So you could cut all of them, leaving about an inch, and then it will regrow. This, I did four seeds, and you can see it didn't do anything. I wasted two seeds is what happened. I've got one head that's a decent size, but smaller than it should be. And then on this side, I just have all of these small, greens. They're not going to get bigger than this. They're jammed up. This is the same age as that plant, by the way. These were put in the tower at the exact same time and the seeds were started at the same time. So doing four seeds stunted the growth. We're doing two maximized. Now this one right here, this is a sweet crisp Salanova. Isn't it gorgeous? Excellent texture. It's called Sweet Crisp because you can hear how crispy it is. And this one's more mature. It's starting to turn red. And this particular one is a lime green until it starts to reach maturity. And then it does start to turn a little bit red on the tips, which I love. This one is also ready to harvest. Now this one is smaller. It was planted at the same time as these others. This one is smaller because I did one seed, but I also did what is called the cut and come again method where I needed salad. So I went around and harvested off of this one around the rim a couple of times during its growing season. So it continued to grow and it didn't stunt the growth of this plant, but what it did was make the end result smaller. So had I not done the cut and come again, this would have been probably twice the size when it was ready to harvest. Again, it's still smaller than it would be if I grew it in the spring outside. Outside it would be three times this big, but it's just knowing that if you do the cut and come again, it's going to continue to grow, but it's not going to get wider and more lush than that just because of harvesting off of it. I know this one is ready because of the time I put it in it. And also just because it's starting to get those red tips and you can look for any browning on the edges that tells me, okay, this plant is mature. It actually doesn't have any browning that I see, but I do know that this one's ready to eat and I'm gonna add it into my salad mix tonight. So what happens if we add, and let me show you this one first. So this is another butter. So this one, I did two seeds just like this one, but this one didn't get as big on the one side. This plant got stunted. And so we are gonna do more than one seed. It's important to pay attention to the lighting that your plant's getting. So what happened was this one over here was a stronger seed. It grew faster. Some of these bigger leaves shaded this one out. So this one hasn't been able to get the light that it needs. What I could do is harvest this side and free up some space to allow this one to grow. That's probably what I'll do just so that I can get the most out of that seed that I put into this plant. Um, but I also could have 
when it was in the earlier growing phases, when this plant started to shade this one out, I could have adjusted them and moved them around a little bit or took off just a couple of the big leaves that were shading this and that would have solved the problem as well. At this point, it's too late. I'm gonna eat the right this side of this plant and I will let that side get a little bit bigger. So this one right here, and I wanted to troubleshoot so you guys know kind of what to look for when things aren't thriving. So this is a red butter leaf. So same as this one, but it's gonna get these deep dark red leaves. And it's a little bit straggly and smaller and just leggy. Yes. Um, it's got decent roots for a lettuce. What happened is I put this one on the top of the tower and I will tell you the top of the tower is not an ideal place for most lettuces. It doesn't get the right amount of light that it needs. The bottom of the tower, it tends to get shaded out too. So I try to avoid putting lettuce at the very, very top row of a tower or at the very bottom, but I ran out of space and when I put this in, I put it at the top. And so now what I need to do is move it, move this one into where this one was because this one did so great I know that it's optimal light and that's what I'll do and this will fill out and we can save it and get it to have just a more substantial leaf than it currently has so that's something to look out for this this is just signs of not getting enough light over here, this one looks really straggly. And if you weren't familiar with growing certain types of lettuce, you may look at this and be like, what is wrong with my lettuce? It's not doing well, it's sagging. You know, this doesn't look like grocery store lettuce that we're used to or this big healthy lettuce. And this is just a young plant. I just put it in recently. And this is a Tom Thumb. And this is by Baker Creek, it's one of my favorite. And it's gonna be a little mini iceberg lettuce, like a tiny cabbage. On the back it says it's an heirloom variety dating back to the 1850s. Makes small cabbage-like green heads that are three inches to four inches across, so pretty small. Very tasty, great for classic markets. So the reason why this one looks like this is because it's young and it hasn't started to form that head yet. So if you have lettuce in your tower and it looks like this, uh, just know this is normal. A lot of people will come and do the cut and come again where they cut all this off and let it regrow. Totally fine if you wanna make this your baby greens. These are actually really crisp too for a baby green. And sometimes you'll get some that are just super soft and not great at all. But I want this to turn into that beautiful head, so I'm not gonna do the cut and come again. I will tell you guys too, I never come harvest it all and let it grow back when I'm growing indoors. And the reason why is the time for it to grow back is so slow that I have found it's not worth the investment. So a lot of market gardeners will purchase these seeds and these seeds are a little bit more expensive, expensive and I will talk about that in a minute and where they come from. So they'll harvest it and then let it regrow, but they're doing that in the ideal temperatures to make this lettuce grow really fast and it makes it a valuable tool to use so that you don't have to plant another seed. In an aeroponic tower, tower I rarely ever do a cut down completely and let it grow back. And the reason is, is you're using resources to run that tower. It still needs to have the lights on and the water nutrients pumped into it. And we wanna use that to grow food, not wait for this to grow back. So I set everything up on, up on a timing system to where I'm turning over my food really fast. So if I were to cut this and wait, it could take a month before I'm starting to get some substantial growth back. Or I can cut this, have it for dinner, take a start that's ready, put this in, and this one could be ready to harvest completely in three weeks. So it's just faster and something I think is more effective when you're growing indoors especially. Now outside, I'll make those videos in the spring. It also depends on the lettuce. I've done the cut and come again and it is faster outside because it has those ideal heat temperatures and natural light. So this one right here, since I'm holding it in my hand, this is an oak leaf, a red oak leaf salanova. And this one I did two seeds as well, but it looks like the same thing happened. This one's giant and gorgeous, and this one got shaded out. So just be mindful of that. So is it worth doing two seeds? I think it is if you're paying attention because you're gonna get these two giant heads on both sides. I didn't. 
pay attention and didn't give this one the ideal um, attention it needed. So at this point now, I could cut this part off and allow this one to grow just to save that seed and get a little bit more bang for my buck for the lettuce seeds I've invested in. This right here is another lettuce that I grow all the time, all four seasons actually, and this is called Four Seasons Marvel. And I would put this in like the butter crisp family. I don't really know what type of lettuce it is now that I'm thinking about it, but that's what I would call it. I would say it's more like a butter crisp. Outside, this will get that cabbage like head. It gets a giant head um, that's red all along the tips. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has a great crispiness to it, especially if you can get that head and cut into it um, and add that to your salad. It's great for like wedges and things like that inside to get that giant head it will be smaller and it will happen sometimes it can take a really long time though so it just depends on how long you want to wait you can cut and come again on these pretty easily without affecting that ball from producing because it's similar to a cabbage a cabbage you can eat the outer leaves that get really big it'll still produce that ball in the center but the more you harvest these greens the more it's going to stunt the growth so just keep that in mind a lot of times i will just eat off of this until i know i've stunted its growth and then start over not really going for that round full head when i'm growing indoors but you want to get that nice size crisp head of lettuce um, it's just a time thing. So it's just a matter of, do you want to sacrifice that space for that one head of lettuce? Or do you want to say this is good enough, harvest this and have it for dinner? I do like these for wraps and for burgers and black bean burgers and, and sandwiches. You can just hear how crisp it is. So it makes a great lettuce for those things. So most of the time I'm just eating off of this until I've eaten so much it's stunted its growth. And then I just plant another seed, make sure I have another one ready to go in its spot. But that is an excellent Four Seasons Marvel. Highly recommend that. This is called Crispino. It is a similar to an iceberg lettuce. It is an iceberg lettuce, but not, you know, the grocery store icebergs have very little nutritional value when you're growing your own iceberg you're still going to have lots of nutritional value in it and can get these um, varieties that are really healthy there were two seeds in this one typically with an iceberg i would only do one but these are again i'm not really going for a head of lettuce that's fully formed i'm going to let this get bigger the leaves actually get about the size of my hand as it gets larger and those are excellent for wraps and for salads so even though it looks very straggly and maybe like it's not well this is just a very young plant you can see its root root base is still really really small this has a long way to go and is another great one for the tower so the last variety that I pulled off my tower, and of course I grow more varieties than this. This is just what I had. So I'll talk about some of the seeds and then really some things to look for when you're picking out seeds and how to know what seeds are going to work indoors since the growing conditions are going to be longer and things are gonna be smaller at the end result. The full maturity of these are gonna be smaller. We wanna make some really wise decisions when we pick out our seeds. So the last one I wanna talk about before I dive into the seeds and show you guys is this romaine. So a romaine lettuce is usually going to take a very long time to get those big romaines that we're used to seeing at the farmer's market. Um, but you can grow a variety indoors in the winter that will produce gorgeous romaines. They're just gonna be teeny tiny. So this is a miniature romaine. I got these at Johnny Seeds Park Seed Company also has a mini red romaine that I've done successfully in the past that I absolutely love. And so this is a very young root system. Um, you barely see roots coming out of it. I put two in here just to experiment on if two is better than one. And this one's already starting to take shape and want to form its head. And it's because full grown, this romaine will be about five to six inches, maybe a little bit larger than my hand uh, when it's done. And so that's what we're going for because this will mature in 45 days. I have seen large romaines grown in aeroponic towers inside and they do get huge and are gorgeous. It just takes a really long time. So it goes back to 
thinking through, do you want to invest 70 days in a lettuce or do you want to invest 30 days in a lettuce? Um, and you kind of just have to decide. For me, I always keep it super short. I keep my turnover very fast so that I never coming out here and walking away without something to harvest for dinner. And me personally, that's the goal of these towers is that I'm not going to the grocery store and then I can make a gorgeous salad or smoothies juices, harvest vegetables every single day to save us that money. So a uh, romaine taking up a spot for 70 days doesn't make sense to me, but I am willing to do some romaines that take up 45 days and still get that wonderful flavor and texture of a romaine. It's just a little bit smaller. All right, so I covered all the lettuce I have here. You can see behind me, there's lettuce in different stages in all my towers and there's a trick to starting your seeds and I will cover that after we go through just some seeds in general and discuss what to look for or what are some of the ones I've had success with. I talked a lot about the Salanova. Those come from Johnny Seeds and most of them come pelleted and what that is is a little casing around each seed and it makes it easier to plant. This is a, a classic market type lettuce to grow for people who grow for the farmer's market or you know hydroponics and in the ground. Can be common practice to use pelleted seeds because they're easier to set up your beds and things like that. But this does make these a little bit more expensive. They are probably three times more expensive per seed than just a regular, you know, this little Tom Thumb seed. So that's why it's important to know two gives you optimal if you're paying attention to how much light each one is getting and four does not. So we don't need to waste two seeds because now we know four actually stunted the, the whole growth and didn't do anything for it. I think it's worth it to invest in these just because this is so delicious and grows so well and so fast on a tower and we're only doing one or two seeds. Rarely do I have these seeds not germinate so it's a good company for that as well. But just be mindful, they are more expensive. So if you look on there and you see like sticker shock, the benefit of growing in an aeroponic tower is we can use one seed and we can manage our seeds very carefully. I've saved a ton of money growing aeroponically versus in the ground just on seeds because one seed becomes one plant. This is actually two seeds, but two seeds becomes two plants that I get to harvest and eat, where sometimes I can take an entire package of seeds out to the garden and have very little germination rate or start seeds in here and think I've got 30 lettuce seeds, but then they go into transplant shock when you put them out and you know 20% die. So you have much less waste in my opinion with an aeroponic tower system once you master how to start your seeds. And I will talk about that in a moment. So I've got the Salanova Red Crisp. They have all of the different ones. This right here is a Cimarron and I pulled this out to show you an example of a romaine that you might not want to plant in your tower. And this one's days to maturity, 65 days. So that's a long time. The ones that I planted here have a 43 or 45 day maturity cycle. So that's a lot faster. So just be mindful of that. You can also look on the back of your seeds and it'll tell you the ideal temperature to grow them in. So you'll know, like I keep this garage at 62, like I mentioned. So I don't want to put in lettuce that likes to grow at 80 degrees only because it's gonna be really stunted in this growing condition. I wanna find one that says it's good at 60 degrees to 80 degrees. And then I know, okay, this one has a great success for growing indoors under my conditions. The uh, Four Seasons Marvel is the exception. It likes all four seasons, which is really cool. I mentioned the Tom Thumb. There is another variety of this plant and it's called Little Gem. This is like the baby romaine version. This is the baby gourmet iceberg type lettuce. And both of these do amazing on the tower, indoors and out. I will tell you outside, even this one, it gets the size of that romaine hearts you would get at the grocery store. So when you buy those romaine hearts at the grocery store, they actually used to be three times as big. They would be giant. And then they take all those outer lettuces off until you just have the tight romaine head. This one won't get the big outer leaves. It just turns into that one uh, romaine head that's tight, long and skinny. Really, really good. I love these. These are from rareseeds.com. Uh, these have 
Ideal temperature of 60 to 80. And these actually have a little bit longer growing cycle than I would recommend. I don't remember what it is. I think it is like 60 days, but I still do them in the towers because I have the space and because I like them so much. But you can see I have made maybe four total growing right now. In the spring, I'll do a lot more because they do grow a little bit faster outside. This is the Crispino, this one right here. Different company, My, this is Johnny Seed. Okay, so this one grows best in cool temperatures, uh, can bolt during hot weather, so you don't wanna do this one in the summer. And days to maturity is 57 days. That includes germination rate. So it's just a matter of, do you want it in your tower long enough? Is iceberg lettuce, um, do you value it enough? I will tell you iceberg lettuce in the towers indoors. In the towers indoors are smaller than you would get when it's grown outside. So just be mindful of that. This is another one, the Hansen Improved Crisp Head Lettuce. I ordered these seeds specifically because these had the shortest maturity date of all the icebergs I had looked up and I was just really craving some crispy iceberg lettuce. So just things to look out for, you know, read your seeds, think through what you're trying to do. Short season stuff is the best when you're growing indoors and especially if you only have one tower and you wanna make sure you have access to food constantly, you really don't wanna tie up a lot of those grow ports with things that are gonna take a really, really long time to grow. This is another one um, that I just wanted to mention. This one's great for cut and come again harvesting and it will tell you on the package, it says it right on the back. Uh, it's recommended as a cutting type for baby greens production or cut and come again harvest. So I know this one's an excellent one to plant four to five seeds in a rock wool and put it in my baby greens section and use it more as a cut and come again kind of harvest. Um, and so just be reading your packages and just be mindful. I grow cucumbers and tomatoes and I'm specifically looking for dwarf variety of tomatoes if i'm going to grow them on my tower that tastes good some dwarfs have been uh, bred to be small and disease resistant at the cost of flavor on the fruit so you want to find one that is small but also has good flavor there's dwarf cucumbers or container cucumbers there's container green beans all of those are great options for a tower garden because they take up less space and grow a little bit faster. These are the tower garden greens. And just wanted to address this. Um, I have a link below if you're interested in purchasing a tower and it will come with these seeds. And I just have to say, I don't love these seeds. So I recommend investing in some of the other ones I've mentioned if you want to launch your tower with some really tried and true, super flavorful, easy to su succeed at harvests. Go with some of these other choices and just put these away. Maybe try to toss these in an outdoor garden or something. Bib lettuce, every time I've tried this, it's super, super leggy when it's young. It's not good as a baby green. It takes a long time and it's very, very, very prone to aphids. Like if I plant this, you could plant it almost like a trap crop because they love this particular lettuce and I don't know why. Um, so just my personal preference, other people may love this. I've seen this grown indoors on other people's towers where it's really gigantic and gorgeous and it will eventually get there. It just takes a long time. What is the maturity on this one actually? From my experience and I just, it's not worth it to me. So that's just my thoughts on that one. Uh, same with this gourmet lettuce. I've tried this a couple of times, done the multiple seeding for the babies, baby greens and they're leggy and soft and just not great. So that's just my opinion. If you do happen to get a tower and it comes with these, maybe just go ahead and invest in some quality seeds um, that will offer more flavor, better colors, better success rate. So that's all I wanted to share on the seeds, just things to be mindful of when you're purchasing. Next, and this is the most important part of growing lettuce is seed starting. So this is where most failure happens for people and they can't get from that first seed or that first germinated seed to this gorgeous head of lettuce because of some very simple things that can happen. This is just how I make sure I go from a seed or a little tiny seedling to a full harvest plant and have very, very little failure rate on my seedlings. 
I was just looking at my grow section earlier before I started this video and almost everything I start comes up and does well because I figured out how to do a really effective seed starting process and timing the plants so that they go into the tower at the right time so they have the greatest chance for success. This system I have also allows for the fastest turnover of food. So let me dive in and explain what that is. So when you start your seeds, you're gonna use your rock wool. And you wanna soak your rock wool for 20 minutes. And then you'll put your seed, if it's Salanova, you may decide to do two seeds. Put your vermiculite over the top, which is going to mimic darkness. And then you want to put this in a tray and have the tray sitting on a heat mat with a dome under a grow light. That is the setup required if you want to have success seed starting. When you purchase the tower garden, it comes with a little seed starting tray and these seeds, I highly recommend just scrap it completely, put it away, use it for something else. And before you get started, invest in a simple grow section that can sit on the counter. It doesn't take up much space and it will just set you up for a much greater success growing if you start off with the right things and get your seeds going in the right way. I will link below one from Amazon that I found that I think is wonderful for seed starting because it has different containers. So if something sprouts and gets, this is a sprout, right? It's popped up. Now I wanna take the dome off of this, but I might have some other things that haven't germinated yet and are still in that germination process and we wanna make sure we keep the dome on those. So the one I found has different sections so that you could have some with the dome off and some with the dome on. Comes with the heat pad and the light too. So it has everything you need to successfully get started. It was like $40. It's worth the investment. You'll waste that much in seeds over time if you don't get these started. Um, the right way first. So once this seed that I put in there germinates, which this one has, now I wanna take the dome off, and this doesn't need anything but water at this point. Right now, it's got all the nutrients it needs from that seed. The seed already had everything it needed to get it to grow to the next level, so I just make sure this one stays wet. It's wet to the touch. If I touch the side, it leaves a little moisture on my finger, but it's not dripping, it's not soaking wet. That's what we're going for. This will grow into this, if you keep it on the heat mat, under the light with the dome off at this point. And you'll start to have, you know, these little babies. And when it gets to about this size, that's when you want to start feeding it because otherwise it's gonna not grow anymore. It's just gonna stall out right here because it doesn't have any nutrients. So I feed mine, there's probably much more technical ways to do this, but I literally just take a cup of water out of one of my tanks that has nutrients and I pour it into my tray where the, my seedlings are. Um, I never let my seedlings sit in water, so I make sure all that water is absorbed. You wanna feed them from the bottom. It, it helps to keep the green algae off the top. So I water them by pouring it into the bottom of the tray, let it all absorb, and if there's any excess, dump it out. So we wanna start feeding them when they're about this size. The next phase is this. So we're getting larger, and this one's still a little bit small, in my opinion, to go into the tower. And I'm gonna show you guys an example of why. Um, but there's also something I'm looking for that's my telltale sign, it's time. A Little bit more size on the top would be one, and then you start to get roots showing on all four sides. This one doesn't have roots on this side, or this side. So I've got two sides where there's no roots on this one. So I don't believe this one's ready. And the reason why I wanna have roots on all four sides, plus coming out of the bottom, is because then I know this plant has a substantial root structure and can handle the amount of water it's going to get when it goes into the tower. So this one's been in the tower for about three days now. So it's a little bit smaller than I typically would put in there now that I'm looking at it. But it had roots on all four sides and I probably needed space in my grow section for other things. And you can see now my rock wool is very wet. It's actually so full of water and I made this video twice because my SIM card got full and I didn't realize it. And I've already squeezed this a bunch in that video too, but you can just see how much water is coming out of this thing 
And what happens is the rock wool starts to deteriorate and fall apart. And that's totally fine and totally normal. We just want to make sure our roots are substantial enough to handle when that happens. They need to be at a place where they're ready to grow and take off. You can see all these white roots. Those are hydroponic roots. They get these nice white thick roots when you grow them in an aeroponic system, which is hydroponics. Um, so it was ready to take off. It was ready to handle all that water. It had enough um, substantial root structure to be able to take in all that water and handle it. If you put them in like this, this has one little tiny root probably down the center. All of this rock wool is gonna fall apart and it's just not gonna give this plant the structure it needs to survive and will most likely, this would probably drown within two days. I have done smaller ones like this in the tower and I found the same thing. They just get exposed to too much water and then they kind of sink into the grow port too low and then you start to get too much water along the, um, I don't know, what do you call it, the stem of these greens and then they rot and then you have no plant. Make sure you wait until they have nice leaf size, two and a half inches, two inches, all the way around. They're showing roots on all four sides plus the bottom. Then they're ready to go into the tower. This also means fast turnover. So this can sit in my grow station for three weeks getting this big. And then I can put it in the tower and within four weeks I have this. And so that's the difference. If I put this in when it's this size, this may die because it may be exposed to too much water and then I've lost money in my seed and my rock wool. It also would be in the tower if it did survive. Now I'm looking at six weeks to get it to this size instead of four weeks. So that's slower turnaround of food because now I can harvest this and I can take this guy, which is pretty much ready, put it in there and in four weeks I've got another plant. So it just saves grow time in the tower so that can be used to make bigger food ready to harvest. So I hope that makes sense and explains sort of my model. I made a video, I think it's called like my secret formula to seed starting or something like that. I will link it below in the description where I talk about starting seeds this way, but specifically how do you know how many to start and when to start them. My formula is to take a fourth of all the grow ports you have on your tower. So if you had 32 grow ports on your tower, you're gonna start eight seeds every two weeks. And that video goes into a lot of details on what to start every two weeks so that you're not ending up with too much of the same thing. So watch that if you wanna learn more. But that's how you guarantee that you always have lettuce going into your tower and at different stages so that you can be eating constantly. A common thing to do with an aeroponic tower is start the seed, put it in there, watch it grow. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, now I gotta harvest it and eat it. And we do that and there's nothing ready to take its place. And then you're starting your seeds then. And then you have to wait a whole nother six, seven, eight weeks before you have more food to harvest. And my goal is saving money and making sure that I'm growing things that we're going to eat and that we're constantly turning that food over so that we don't have any gaps in harvesting off of our tower. I know I have multiple towers and most people just have one. And the question was asked, you know, can you germinate and have things in different stages even if you have one tower? And the answer is absolutely yes. I actually run my towers as if they were all a single tower. So none of my towers are set up with just lettuce that's all planted at one time or just one thing. They are always in a rotating stage. So I will have cabbage and herbs and peppers and what else? I have eggplant going and all sorts of things and I'm constantly harvesting and adding and harvesting and adding to each one of those towers. So this works even if you just have one tower. That's it guys for my tips on how to grow lettuce indoors in an aeroponic tower garden. I hope this inspires you to grow some of your own food, grow some of your own lettuce, and gives you the tools you need to have the greatest success. Definitely watch some of those other videos about seed starting. I know these videos are probably really boring if you're not interested in growing food aeroponically, but if you are, my goal here is not to entertain and give you a lot of fluff, it's to give you the facts so that you have the greatest success growing your own food 365 days a year. So thank you guys for joining joining me. I appreciate you hanging out with me today and learning alongside me and post in the comments anything you've learned, any of your favorite lettuces 
Um, if you've had any failures or any questions on why something might not have worked for you, post them in the comments. I love to chat and learn what others are doing and problem solve alongside you guys when things aren't going right so that we can figure out how to maximize growth in these aeroponic towers and have the greatest success. So thanks for joining me guys and I will see you on the next video. <coughs> And one quick note, a friend asked me if you can juice lettuce, and actually I juice lettuce all the time because we have so much of it, that if we have an abundance, I will toss it into my green juice and it's amazing. Smoothies too, and if you do get too much abundance, you can harvest it and put it right into the freezer, and that's the green I use to put in our smoothies all the time. So don't be afraid to harvest, toss it in the freezer if you just feel overwhelmed or don't feel like a salad. Sometimes I have those days. I'd rather drink a salad than eat a salad. So yes, you can juice it, you can add it to smoothies, you can freeze it to keep all those fresh enzymes and those health benefits of fresh food. And yeah, 